Good morning, everybody. This is the Master's House, and this is Pastor Jim and Katie Langlois, and we are here in Henrico, Virginia, just a little bit north of the city of Richmond, Virginia, mm -hmm. right near the corner of Parham Road and Staples Mill at 8659 Staples Mill Road in the Virginia Christian Alliance building. And uh, our service starts at 11, and we had worship, and we've had a good time, and we want to join all those that are coming online for the message. We're really glad you're here, and I believe it's going to minister to you. The title today is, you ready for this? I'm ready for this. Why don't this. you tell them the title? Oh, you want me to tell yeah, them the you title? Yeah, you can tell them. All right, so it is Battling the Ites in Everyday Life. Part three. Part three. And... Um, so you can get uh, part two and part one on the church website. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I might want to mention something here yeah. also. Last week we had Dwayne Norman and Leah. We did. Uh, and we had three services and they were great. All three of those messages are available on the website. All three of those messages are also on the YouTube site if you want to listen to awesome. it. Awesome. But again, if you want to listen to and I would recommend listening to part one and two of Battling the Ites in Everyday Life. Uh, and those are also on the web, on the, the Master's House TMHNOW.org website, and also on the TMHRVA uh, YouTube site. Mm -hmm. So you can catch up on those, but I would really suggest you uh, listen to one and two. And this is part three. Mm -hmm. So um, battling the ites uh, in uh, everyday life, if you look at the slide, there's the hit, say this after me, Hittites, Hittites, Girgashites, Girgashites. Amorites, Amorites, Canaanites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Perizzites, Hivites, Hivites, Jebusites. Jebusites. Now there's other ites in the Bible, but the verse that we're going to look at mentions in particular uh, those seven. Amen. Yeah. And uh, so where I'm going at here is, uh, let's start with what we've been starting at each week. Genesis chapter one, verses 27 through 28. We're going to read this again. It's the first thing that God told Adam and Eve to do. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, it's the 28th, 27th, and 28th verse of the entire Bible. Yes. You know? It's the 27th and 28th verse right at the beginning. And uh, do you want to read that, Katie? I can. So, God, And all of our scriptures, yep. I'm cutting you off again, yes. will be New King James <laughs> Version today. Okay. No, they're not. They're not? No. Except for three. Correct. There you go. <laughs> Which will be New Living Translation. All right. Are we ready? Who's preaching today? Me or you? You. Okay, go ahead. Get it straight. All right. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And they make a comment. Oh. That's not talking about the animals he created. It's about the human beings that he created in his image. Amen. Mm, interesting comment. Go ahead. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And and, and according to God's standard of marriage, the only uh, ones that can do that are both male and female together. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, that's the first thing that God told Adam and Eve. Amen? Yes. Well, let's look at the first thing that Jesus told his disciples when he sent them out. And we read this uh, last few weeks also. Mark chapter 16, verses 17 through 18 in the New King James. Go ahead. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And this should be the normal, like uh, Dwayne said, true normalcy, true the normal normalcy. life of a Christian. Yeah. Uh, the very thing that he should, we should be doing is, is the very first thing he told us to, to do is to cast out demons and speak with new tongues and take up serpents. Yeah. Take up serpents really means is to take authority over the big ones. Yeah. The big demons. And uh, and if they drink any deadly any, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. I've used that many times when we feel like maybe we have eaten something that's not good for us. That's a great scripture to stand on for the Word of God to uh, be healed through. Amen. Or if you're about to eat something like when in Rome. When in Rome, you know. You want to... Pray that over, yep, like, that's a good I'm prayer. about to have this, right. Lord, and I'm going need, to need some faith for this thing right here. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will cover in this. And this is for signs of those who what? 
believe. believe, right? If they, if, if Christians aren't believing that, then you will not see this sign or these signs following them. And therefore, one way to see if the Christians of the, that we know, are they really following the Lord, his instructions before he rose from the dead, uh, or the, before he left, you know, uh, to come back uh, later on, he, uh, uh, then they should be doing these things. They should be believing and walking in these truths. Amen? Amen. And it should be our everyday life. But, you know, what I would call this, I didn't mention it yet, but you probably heard this term. And it's called spiritual warfare. Yes. Now, spiritual warfare is, a, is an interesting term, but over the years, it has been uh, overemphasized or un underemphasized, and some people got a little wacky with it. Uh, but truly, let me give you a definition of spiritual warfare, and I don't hear anything in this that's, that's uh, flaky or too wild or uh, 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 spooky, you know, pooky. spooky pooky. Would you read the, this definition of spiritual warfare? Spiritual warfare is the Christian concept of fighting against the work of evil forces. It is based on the biblical belief in evil spirits or demons that are said to intervene in human affairs in various ways. Now, do we believe in evil spirits and demons that are, sure. that are trying to intervene in our affairs? Well, if we believe so, well, one way to believe is to see what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. He would go and cast out a devil, and the person would be healed, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or, or miracles would take place. So, the, the you know the uh, water would be turned into wine, and different things like that. And so, uh, it's the biblical belief in evil spirits, demons that are said to intervene in human affairs in various ways. And so, uh, there is, and I've said this, I think, every week, that it's like a curtain. And we have to take the curtain and look and see what's behind in the spirit to find out why things in the natural are, uh, maybe they're not going as they should. Mm -hmm. Amen. They're being influenced in an evil way. So, uh, this scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, really gives us a feel for spiritual warfare. Go ahead. <clears throat> For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And notice that this isn't a physical war here. No. That's why we're calling it spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. It's against what I would call the kingdom of darkness organized and produced by Satan himself, who used to be Lucifer, the worship leader of heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he fell. God cast him down to the earth. And uh, so he set up this kingdom, which we've been learning about. Because if we're going to uh, take authority, like the scripture tells us to do, we need to know who, what, what how we do this. Amen. In order to uh, do the things that God is, is telling us to do. So, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, correct? Correct. Yeah. That's out of John 10.10. 10. And his biggest enemies, you ready for this? Are the saved, born-again, spirit-filled, and, I'm going to say this, family-integrated godly believers. Because one of the number one things the devil is, is, is wants to stop and tear up is the family uh, unit. And God's family, as run by the head of the home, the master of the house, etc. Right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, uh, his most feared institution is the family, and he's gonna and he's doing everything he can to destroy it. Amen. But Jesus told us that we should be casting them out. In Genesis, as Moses wrote, that God said we should be taking authority of those things and running them out. Amen. Amen. And rebuking them. Well, how can he destroy the family? Well, he can by dividing the family Amen. and getting rid, rid of the strong man, getting rid of the father. Like if you want to attack a man's house, you've got to go in and bind the strong man and get him out, right? right? That's what the scripture says. And I would put it this way. We need to remove what we call the master of the house. Amen? Mm -hmm. Remove all authority from the mother and the father and the grandparents, adopted par parents, foster parents and guardians, as we see even today, now a lot of uh, parental rights are being taken away from, uh, uh, you know, by the school system for certain things that, that just is wrong. It's, it's very wrong. And uh, they're trying to remove the influence from those who God has called, appointed and anointed. 
and they, they're creating an educational system that removes all of God's laws and principles and with the purpose of changing culture to a godless society. Sure. And we need to resist. Yeah. We need to cast this, these spirits out of what they're doing. It's all behind the, 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 the screen, so to speak. It looks good. It sounds good. It's equality. It's diversity. It's, mm -hmm. and, 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 and you don't, it's very dark behind that screen. Mm -hmm. You can see what's going back there. Who's pulling those strings? It's really something. So how would he destroy the institution of family? Well, 1 John chapter 2, verses uh, 16 through 17, tell us how. Go ahead and read that, Katie, if you would. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. So he's using three basic things. Uh, the lust of the flesh... Lust of the eyes and the pride of life. That's a very interesting word, pride there, that you watch it. We'll look at a little bit here today. And um, so, but how would we fight against these things in the world? Lord, you're telling us to resist. You're telling us to, to uh, you know, fight back and, and not let them gain ground. And well, Matthew 16, 19 says this. I'll read this one. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Don't forget, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but, but against principal, principalities and powers. We're going to read that in just a minute. So, in order to subdue, like Genesis says, and have dominion, we need to know how to bind and loose. And we need to know who our enemy is, who to bind and who to loose. Amen? I mean, you don't want to bind the angels. You want to loose the angels. You know, you don't want to uh, loose the devil. You want to bind the devil and, and, and all of his co cohorts, things like that. So I put together a new slide. We had a slide showing uh, sort of authority in heaven and uh, the system that Satan set up. And so I made this new slide, and I'm adding some things that I'm calling the seven ites. Everybody say ites. Ites. So here, just looking at the chart here, we have Satan, uh, who is the devil. He used to be Lucifer. He was thrown down to the earth, and he took his fallen angels with him, one-third of, of the innumerable angels, and they are the demons that we see today and hear about. Everybody says, where do demons come from? Well, they're the fallen angels who fell by, uh, by uh, uh, making that decision. Amen? They could make a decision, but they didn't have the right to make that decision. Amen? And so the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, it just tells us that, um, uh, well, let me go ahead and read that. Finally, and you can keep that slide up there for a little bit while I explain it and, and read some things. Um, read Ephesians 6, 10 through 12 as we look at that slide. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, I noticed something here. You can tell me if you agree. Say this. Um, uh, principalities. Principalities. Powers. Powers. Rulers of the darkness. Rulers of the darkness. Spiritual hosts of wickedness. Spiritual hosts right, well, of wickedness. Well, those seem, in my view, to be demons of territories. Large systems, territories. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. And then the list that I have on that slide, which says uh, they also can, we know there's different demons mentioned in the Bible. There's familiar spirits, unclean spirits, evil spirits, and spirits of infirmity, and spirits of divination. Well, those seem to be speaking to me of demons with specific purposes. Mm -hmm. Like this, you know, the spirit of infirmity would be sickness, and the spirit of uncleanness would be uh, maybe sexual sin, those type of things. Um, and divination would be witchcraft and things. So they seem to be uh, more of a purpose uh, explanation of those demons. Mm -hmm. Now, in this series, we're, gonna, we're discussing and uh, battling the ites in everyday life, and uh, uh, which seem to be everyday issues plaguing society to steal, kill, and destroy God's greatest creation, which is man, including man and woman. Amen. Now, where I got these battling of the ites uh, from was Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. 
And let's go ahead and read this uh, and let Katie read it. And, and this came about uh, some information to us through uh, uh, John um, uh, and Lisa, help me out. Bevere. Bevere. John and Lisa Bevere were uh, preaching a message we were listening to, and he was talking about uh, a rabbi, and they were talking about spiritual warfare, and the rabbi said, well, we need to know who our enemies are. And, uh, and he told John, I forget, correct me if I'm not was wrong. Actually, yeah, you're wrong. So, <laughs> no, okay. he told his son, Alec. Okay, he told his son, Alec, that uh, you need to know who you're fighting, and this rabbi had shown him in Deuteronomy 7, we can find out more, some more things of that evil kingdom that we need to be taking authority over and, and fighting, amen? Mm -hmm. amen? Then the definitions that we saw, even a little more refined than principalities and powers uh, or spirit, you know, evil spirits. Make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. So let's look at Deuteronomy 7, 1 through 6. You can uh, read it and I'll make comments along the way. Okay. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you, and when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them. Oops. And utterly, no, go down. There it is. And utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Keep going. Nor shall you make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. Very strict. Keep for they going. will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. So the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and destroy you suddenly. But thus you shall deal with them. You shall destroy their altars and break down their sacred pillars and cut down their wooden images and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. And of course, this is God to the, Isra uh, to the Israelites uh, as they prepare to uh, enter the promised land. And he said, okay, you're going to have to go into these groups in these territories here, labeled by these uh, uh, groups of people, and you're going to utterly destroy mm -hmm. them. Don't let anything live. Just mm -hmm. remove them completely mm -hmm. because they will, they will infect you. Mm -hmm. They will affect your society. If you don't run them out, it's, it's going to be a bad deal. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and so he's telling them to do that. So he said, your seven enemies that you have to overcome are the Hittites, Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Now, what we found out through John, uh, having heard from uh, this rabbi, rabbi that Brian. those words, uh, the Hittites, Girgashites, and Amorites, are so, uh, and, and the others, their names described who they were. They described their character and their culture. Now, that makes sense. So when you think of Hittites, you will think of what that word means. And so last week we, we looked, talked about two of them. Mm -hmm. And we found out that the word Hittites means terror, fear, phobias, torment, suicidal spirit, confusion, discouragement, and low self-esteem. And to balance it all together, I would call it that the Hittite spirit was a fear-based spirit. Mm -hmm. Those people were afraid, they, were, they, they had low self-esteem, they just uh, backed up in fear from, from battles and different things and, and, uh, they, and confusion personally in their own uh, minds towards themselves, they were discouraged, they had low self-esteem. And you know, those are things we see today, mm -hmm. very normal day-to-day -day things. That's why I said the title of the message would be Battling the, uh, These Spirits of Every Day. You know, or battling the ites in everyday life is what the title was. So, you know, I see people uh, with low self-esteem quite often, uh, people who've been discouraged. And, and I'm sure that everyone in this room at one time, you've been discouraged and you've been at a point of low self-esteem and you, you had to get your bootstraps back and slap yourself and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I, I don't want to accept that. And that's what we're talking about. But most people would think, well, I have this, I have a suicidal spirit or confusion or discouragement because job, my job didn't go well or low self-esteem. 
that might be true, but there's more behind the curtain as to what's causing that too. Don't discard to the knowledge that, wait a minute, the kingdom of darkness is also behind all of that. Yes. See? So this is why God wants us to know that, that if you're dealing with low self-esteem, it's not just because of what happened today. It's also set up by a kingdom of darkness to try to destroy you. And you should stand back up and say, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I cast you out. I know what happened, but I'm not going to let you control me through, you know, belittling myself with my thoughts and my mind through your spirit. So it's much more than we think. Amen. These are the little fine things like a phobia or a, uh, a confusion or a terror. Amen. So the Hittite spirit we talked about last, last week was a fear-based spirit. The Girgashites, we found out, were an earthly, worldly, temporal, not eternal, listen carefully, fleshly, carnal mind, wanting to run away and turn back. The name also uh, means an idolatrous spirit, and this would include all sexual immorality and worship of the flesh. We didn't talk much about that last week, but this scripture would fall into it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 through 4. Why don't you read that, Katie? For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. And we know there's a lot of sexual immoral things that are being done in society and, and, and different things, and but we need to we need to know that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. It's more than that. It's a kingdom of darkness trying to destroy us, family, and God's people. Amen? Amen. And so uh, that's what the Girgashites said. Now, Deuteronomy 7, in talking about this, he said, Nor shall you make marriages with them. You don't have to pull up the scripture. I'll just read this to you. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son, for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods, so the anger of the Lord will be aroused against you and destroyed, uh, and destroy you suddenly. A lot of people say, well, I'm going to marry him. I know he's not a Christian. I know that, you know, I'm just going to believe God and, and he'll, he'll slowly come. Uh, God says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And that's just not in marriage either. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean you can't work with them or you can't love them or, or be with them. Uh, but like Jesus, he changed them. They didn't change Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. When he hung around sinners, he, he wasn't the one changing. He was to, there to change them. Amen? Amen. So uh, this Girgashite, which we uh, did study last week, really includes all of that. And it's all this behind-the-scenes stuff happening to destroy us. Amen. Luke chapter 10, verses 18 through 19, this is what Jesus said to us about them. Go ahead. Okay, so hold on. And he saw, I'm sorry, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, we talked about some broad things there about society, but all of those we have authority over. If we know it and we're bold enough to take it, amen, amen. and run them out of our families, run them out of our lives, and, uh, and pray against them, in uh in our schools oh that's a good one isn't it amen um so the first two of course that we mentioned and we're going to go from there uh the uh hittites. the hittites were a fear-based spirit the girgashites i'm going to call um what did i sum it up as as a uh, i i we had talked about an idolatrous spirit an idolatrous spirit yeah a worldly fleshly an idolatrous spirit mm -hmm. is the way that I wrote it. Yes, yes. So let's go to uh, the third one, and then that's the Amorites. This is interesting about the Amorites and what this word means. It means sayer, S-A-Y-E-R. In other words, they're really vocal. They uh, believe in prominence, pride, arrogance. They're boastful in speech. Judgmental, rebellion, speaking negative words instead of the word of God, trusting in the negative news and media social sites. Very interesting. Here's a scripture, 
Now this word, pride, just hits me as an interesting word. I hope you, uh, you know, we've heard a lot about that lately. That's a very popular word today, right? Proverbs chapter 16, verses 18 through 19 says this. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Now, somebody would say, well, that's not what this scripture is talking about. It's just talking about personal pride when we're supposed to be humble. And I said, okay, but I just find it interesting that that word is being used for something else. Exactly. Amen? Because Jesus is, or God, the word of God is saying, pride goes before destruction. Why did they grab onto that word? Mm, I don't know. Uh, now, I found a, a, uh, a picture online uh, about a church that had a banner. And uh, I just made a copy of the banner and rebuilt it to give, show you this picture. And it uses this word proud or pride. And uh, this is completely opposite from the word of God. They have hijacked the word pride to say that it is good if it involves sexual immorality. Right. <laughs> and this thing uh, being presented by this church in Tennessee, what they're saying is God is proud of them. God is proud of them. Well, that's not what the word pride means in the Bible. That's not how pride is, God is using pride. And plus, the rainbow is God's, not the pride's. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but when I saw that, I thought that is blasphemy right there. It is. The, in, in the undermining meaning. And to know, I want you to know, that there is a curtain. And behind that curtain, there's way more than a group of people down in Tennessee who are putting this out there that we're fighting against. It's happening around the world through the kingdom of darkness and the things that Satan has set up. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. And so I just, I'm not going to spend much time there, but I just want to let you know that all of that is included in the spirit of the Amorites. That's what's going on, y'all. The Amorites, um, to me, when you, you say sayer, very vocal, but it's not even just... Um, you know, you had negativity in there. That's a critical spirit, too. A spirit that's always looking for the worst, right? Yeah. Um, but it's also a, um, a spirit that is um, declarative of the worst, as in um, something that's um, to be admired. So, yeah. you know, if you look at boastful in, sh in speech, judgmental, rebellion, that's all part of being um, critical, but also being, um, you know, well, yeah, vocal and, and, but just, you know, admiring their own ability to have their own words. It's yeah. very, you know, yeah. man-made, like, you know, self-made. Well, in, in, in so many things, we see an alternate. Yeah. For example, for Easter Sunday, we have an alternate of a bunny mm -hmm. uh, that lays eggs or Estra, the god of, of Easter. Uh, I don't particularly care for the word Easter because the roots of it is the God of Esther. Right. Uh, and, and, and that has to do with um, uh, uh, fertility. fertility and all of that. Which I, it's just a substitute that is taken uh, to replace the thought of uh, Resurrection Sunday. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, then we have uh, the Christmas, the birthday of Christ. And so there is an alternate, uh, the story of Santa. Now... I like uh, made-up stories, and, and, and I think the, the story of Santa is really cool. Uh, flying reindeer, I think it's a great story, it's fun, but to teach to your kids, uh, or, or to, to teach kids like this is true, and this is actually real, well, that's way over the line, and to use it uh, as the major point for Christmas rather than the birth of Christ is a totally alternate thing, amen? And uh, so I do like the Santa Claus movie. Uh, I think it's a great story. And I would play it for my kids, but I would let them know that it's just a, it's a fun, made-up story. It's not true. And they can have fun with that. Well, but let me tell you what Christmas really is. It's about the birth of our Savior. And then, of course, we have Halloween uh, on the, uh, right in front of All Saints Day, All Hallowed Saints Day. And, and uh, what else do we have? We have... Um, uh, Different things like that going on. So, all replacements. 
just to, to so, and now, even in our educational system, we can't say uh, Resurrection Sunday or uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, you can say, what, what do they call it, winter break. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, spring break. Like, they have Easter Monday. Do they have Easter if, Monday? If you get it off. Okay. But, again, that's Easter, not Resurrection Day yeah. Monday. So. so it's just, it's, uh, you know, through a system that's trying to take anything right. uh, godly out of the system, uh, particularly, right. you know. Um, and then, uh, let's go ahead to the Canaanites. Uh, this is the fourth one, the Canaanites. This is interesting. It means merchant trafficker, materialism, anything for profit, dishonest, defraud, illegal goods, greed, and lust for material wealth. Now that's an everyday affair we see in different places. Greedy, greedy, greedy. Read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which has some have strayed from the faith in their greediness, and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Again, you know, everybody wants to prosper, but be careful because behind the curtain, money is the, uh, the love of money the is the root of all evil. Yeah. Amen? And so that, this is the spirit of the Canaanites. Let's go to the book of Hosea, chapter 12, verses 7 through 8. We're going to look at the New Living Translation here. I'll read this one. Uh, this is out of the Old Testament. It says, But no... The people are like crafty merchants selling from dishonest scales. They love to cheat. Israel boasts, I am rich. I've made a fortune all by myself. No one has caught me cheating. My record is spotless. The thing that amazes me is all the fraud I see in emails and text messages and things that are going on to, for people to buy things on the internet and do all this and do all that where they'll steal, steal your money in a flash. Amen. And you get these phone calls. Oh, you've won a prize. Give us your credit card. Oh, no, no, don't do it. I can't tell you how many times I've had to replace my little uh, <clears throat> ATM card because <clears throat> someone's stolen the numbers. Mm. And they're charging things on it. His card all the time. Yeah, it seems like once a year. Not mine. <laughs> and uh, I was talking to the lady in the back. I said, how can you fight against that? She says, well, <clears throat> use the tap instead of putting it in places. But she said, uh, they're so sophisticated, they, the, the device they're using is no bigger than the pinhead. And they can stick it in machines, and they get your numbers. And, and, sh and, and, and she says, well, that's got to be costing a lot of money to the bank. She says, well, yeah, but it's all insured. And I said, so you're saying nothing can be done. You didn't give me the answer that I, you can protect my card enough that nobody's going to steal the number. No, she said, we don't have the answer. Isn't that something? Because that's how much, and this is going on in Ashland and Mechanicsville, you know, as you get your gas and different things, so be very careful. It's just um, funny, too, because whenever they steal, it's like sports, you know, paraphernalia. It's like sports stuff, and he's like not a sports person at all. And it's like, yeah, you know, you bought a Tampa something or other for, and he's like, who no, are they? Are they baseball? <laughs> are they basketball? <laughs> no, I did not purchase that. <laughs> well, we'll have to cancel that card. It'll be about a week or so before you get the new card I'm going. And then I got a new number. I'm thinking, you know, you just, you just want to reach through the, the TV or the, the, the computer, grab them by the neck, but then you realize, oh, I'm a Christian. So I'll let someone else handle that. Vengeance is the Lord's. Amen? Amen? Remember the story of Jacob and Esau. Esau traded his birthright for a pot of stew. Uh, he gave up his promised land uh, uh, for a bowl of meat and potatoes. He forfeited a lifetime of blessing for a moment's gratification. Mm. And that is talking about the spirit of the Canaanites. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, God said, if you don't run these people... Out, and of course it's more than people they will affect your families your sons your daughters and if you let them marry you're going to be in big trouble it's not going to it's going to infect and cause spiritual diseases amen mm -hmm. not good let's go to number five and this is the last one we'll talk about today and next next time we come back we'll finish it out with the last two the parasites 
N- uh, not to be confused with parasites. No, not parasites. 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 There's two Z's parasites. in that. And uh, uh, why don't you read what this word means? All right. It means unprotected, unwalled villages, free to wander without responsibility or accountability to a community, no discipline or self-control, no restrictions, nothing is immoral. Wow. It's a free-for-all. Free-for-all. Mm. Now, I found a site that um, uh, this uh, somebody wrote uh, on a church website. They said, The parasite spirit is alive and well in the church today. You will recognize this spirit in people who go from church to church, never committing to one body. They're hesitant to commit to a church, and they feed on messages they hear from one conference to another. They are more connected outside the church than inside the church. They separate themselves from the local body, and as a result, they are unwalled, unprotected, and immature. Growth comes by being joined to the body. You won't break through by wandering from church to church. You must find where God wants you to be planted and stay there. Uh, You see, church is not just a place you go to. Church is a family you belong to, and that's why the devil would use the spirit is to break up the family of church, amen? And as a part of God's family, you have a place to belong. And I have a couple of scriptures we can add to that. Uh, you can read the first one there, Proverbs 25, 28 in the New Living Translation. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. And then I want to read Ephesians 4, 14 through 16. Yeah, broken down walls without self-control. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, no commitment anywhere. Ephesians 4. 14 through 16, New Living. Uh, Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. Each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. And of course, we know the scripture says that uh, uh, do not uh, uh, forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Amen. Mm -hmm. Church is a very important thing. We we teach on the importance of family, but we do believe the church is just as important. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the slide there that I have showing the kingdom of darkness and Satan, the the fallen angels and Mm -hmm. principalities, rules of the darkness, familiar spirits, and so on. Let's look through the spirits that we've named so far, the Sevenites. The Hittite spirit is fear-based. The Girgashite spirit is worldly, fleshly, idolatrous. The Amorite spirit is an evil speaking, or evil speaking and pride. The Canaanite spirit is the love of money and greed. And these are just real uh, vague or, uh, you know, uh, overview general general yeah, terms. The parasite spirit is wandering and immature. Isn't that interesting? Now we have two more that we're going to do next week. Um, actually, it'd be in two weeks. Yeah. Yes. And uh, but that's the Hivite spirit and the Jebusite spirit. And I'm not going to tell you what they mean because you're going to have to come and find out. They're very very interesting. So. <laughs> I'll say this again. The, our, who are our enemies? Well, uh, the principalities, powers, rules of the darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness seem to me to be demons of territories. Make sense? Yep. And I'm just saying that in a general sense. Uh, the uh, familiar spirits, unclean spirits, evil spirits, spirits of infirmity, spirits of demon, divination seem to me that they could be demons with specific purposes. Okay. And then... We, uh, the other ones, uh, being all of these ites, I, I, they seem to me to be demons of everyday issues, mm-hmm. uh, plaguing society to steal, kill, and destroy God's greatest creation of man, and that's both men and women and family. Amen? Amen. There's the fear-based Hittite spirit, the world, worldly, fleshly, and idolatrous Girgashite spirit, the evil-speaking and prideful Amorite spirit, the love of money and greedy Canaanite spirit, and the wandering and immature parasite spirit. So don't miss the next message where we'll go over the last two 
the Hivite and Jebusite. I you just, have something else? Yeah, I just think it's interesting, you know, he says to, to not even, like, to to wash them out. That's pretty much what he's saying is to, to take care, wash it out. Like, it's not even, and this is, you know, Old Testament, obviously, so it's, you know, in that time it was, it was annihilated an entire people because of this, spirit um, yes <clears throat> so it's interesting because you know you see it and you see that God doesn't want us to be um, near around oh, fellowshipping with yeah, yeah um, part that those spirits you know it's worldly stuff and it's not the people it's the spirits yes. and so because this is Old Testament so nowadays we look at it and we we see okay God doesn't want us to be playing with these spirits making friendships when i say friendships i'm not talking about acquaintances or you know witnessing to i'm talking about like friendships where you are um you know becoming friends with someone or that has this spirit on them near them you know it's one of those things where we had talked about jesus had you know he met with tax collectors and prostitutes and sinners but those people left change not jesus yeah. and so that's the difference is when we're you know we're around those people you know we are able to take authority over those spirits and say be gone goodbye we bind you we lose freedom over you we lose you know we're able to do that over those spirits but we're not supposed to intermingle with those spirits i'm not talking yeah. about people but the yeah. spirits so that and when, we don't control people right so right that's the thing. so when we come you know and we come against or we come to meet a person who has a spirit on them we don't get to stroke or pet the demon within them you know they need to, it needs to be gone so it's just kind of an interesting you're looking at like the old testament visualization yeah. of this compared to new testament not the person but the spirit, the spirit yeah them. yeah now just think of this some people would say or could say you know the promised land and had all those people living there in those territories and and where does god get the idea that he tells his people, just go and get, kill them all. Get rid of them. That doesn't seem to make sense. Well, now that we know who they are and what's well, going on, he was saying, no, you can't have this land. No, this is not your place. Joshua, run them out and inherit what I have given the children of Israel. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. And so it's the same for our houses. It's the same for our families. He's given those things to us, and he wants... Uh, what we would call the master of the house to run them off. Amen. Mm -hmm. And even in our churches, mm -hmm. uh, the, the leadership of the churches and the people that go there, if we see something that's uh, uh, not right, let's run it off. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. So we can cast these out by taking our authority and using the keys of binding and loosing and to subdue and have dominion over every living thing that moves on the earth. And that's what Genesis 1.28 mm -hmm. said, if you remember. And then Mark 16, uh, let's go ahead and read that one, Mark 16, 17 through 18. We'll end on this scripture. Uh, go ahead and read that. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And God wants us to rule and reign, men and women. And in order to do that, he's telling us we need to run things out. Get out. Amen. In the spirit. Hallelujah. Well, do you have any further comments that you'd like to make, Katie? Not at the moment. That talks about the Hittites, Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, and Perizzites. We've got two more to go, and that's going to be even more interesting. Father, let's pray. I just thank you for this message. Uh, help us to learn to rule and reign as you have made us to rule and reign and take authority to rule and reign. And not to be discouraged and allow these different spirits to control us. But to realize that there's a lot going on behind the screen. A lot more than we thought. Even with these little things. Like our self-esteem. Little things. But some of them are very big. But uh, thank you Lord for giving us this authority. And teach us. And that our faith would fail not to remove Amen. what we need to run out of our homes and our, our uh, churches, and our towns, our cities, and our nation, and the world, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Well, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> I bet you can't wait to hear about the last two.
a lot of material here, but uh, thank you, Jesus. Well, it's time for us to bring our gifts before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, as I always do every week, I want to thank you for all those online and here for supporting this church financially. I thank you for the power that you give us to do what we need to do uh, to complete our vision and to keep going forward. Amen. Amen. And uh, so, uh, for those that uh, uh, support through tithes and offerings, we thank you. We we just uh, praise you for your support. And uh, but we also have a missions every week or every month. Excuse me. Uh, once a month, we support a specific mission. And uh, and and this month, we've been supporting Dwayne and Leah Norman. The uh, uh, they came and ministered last week. And uh, but instead of just taking one Sunday to receive an offering uh, for them. We made them the missionary for the month, and so we have enough time for everybody to think as to how they would like to support it. So anything that comes either through online, uh, we'll tell you about how to do that, or here uh, through checks and our, on our envelopes in the box back there that's marked missions. Anything marked missions during this month will go towards uh, the Normans in their ministry. Amen? Amen? And this is the last Sunday for that. Amen? Well, technically, no. Technically, Technically, we recorded that it will be next Sunday as well. But you can just disregard that because I said it was the wrong thing. We don't know what date it is. But, but uh, this month, the month of June, is for the Normans. Yes, month of June is for the Normans. And uh, I already decided next month is going to... I got a call, I can tell everybody here, Denisha Twama from uh, Kenya. Kenya. And uh, he, uh, not a call, but he... T uh, Email. Emailed us. And asked, he says, is there any way uh, that he could pass out more of our material uh, to his streets and around there in town? And so I said, yes, we're going to make him the missionary for uh, July. So anything that comes in missions in July will go towards him to, to print more of the materials that we have going out in Kenya. Specifically, why praying in tongues? And he wants to do uh, the, the booklet we have on, on praying in tongues. He loves handing that one out. So, And they literally print, print hundreds and pass them out. So isn't that cool? We'll do that next month. But awesome. when you listen to next week's message, it says that it's still Dwayne and I made a mistake, but everybody's good. We'll get it straight. But, so, uh, how do they give uh, to online? <laughs> that was a fun worded question. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, this is freezing on me, so I'm going to change it Or let's put it this here. way. How would they support the ministry, either online or here? All right, so you can go to the website, tmhnow.org. You can give on the giving page. Um, we use the platform called Tithely, T-I-T-H-E-L dot, dot, sorry, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y, I said it wrong, because um, I'm multitasking. So there, right there on your screen is the Tithely app. You can put it on a device if you would yep. like. Give that way. You can give to the master's house. Just make sure that is that it is the master's house in Ashland, Virginia. Um, and Mechanicsville, Mechanicsville Virginia. Virginia. It's because I'm freezing. You might need to do the You're rest good. of the Yes, moment, in Mechanicsville, so Virginia. Uh, the Master's House in Mechanicsville, Virginia. That's our mailing address. And so when you use Tithely, either through the website or the app, it'll give you the option to say tithe or offering or missions and just do all that and we'll make sure uh, we direct your finances to where you want it to go. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And then if you're here, you know what to do here. We have envelopes in the back and the in the box, and you can use that and just put on there how you'd like it to be uh, categorized there. And we thank you. Let's pray over our giving. Sorry. As, are you ready? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you for this ministry that's producing fruit. And we give with joy, thanksgiving, and uh, we believe... Uh, we're producing great things around the world in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 And then, uh, are you ready now to say how they can find out more about us? Uh, yes, I will go through kind of slowly here. You can check us out at teamhnow.org yeah. to find out more about us, connect with us. You can also look at archive messages on that website, or you can go to our YouTube, which is TMHRVA. Um, you can connect with us at Facebook at TMHNow. And you can also check out our family vision of familybiblerevolution.com. At this website here, you can um, watch the Get on the Right Tracks video and the six snapshots to find a little bit of a summary or synopsis on what the Family Bible Revolution is all about. And then, um, if you need to connect with us... You can write me at P-A-S-T-O-R-J-I-M, Pastor Jim, at 
T-M-H-N-O-W.org. Yes. And we'd love to hear from you. Is that it? I think that's We're it. We're good. Amen. Well, let's pray. We're going to say goodbye to those online, and then we'll uh, say goodbye and hug to those who are here. Amen. Father, yes. we thank you for those who have joined us online and for those that are watching this message in, at a future time. We call you blessed, happy, healthy, whole, and prosperous in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 We'll see you all later. Yeah.